Hello guys, this is Surayan. Welcome back to my channel Adamant Algorithm. Uh, in this video, we are going to see how to shoot projectiles or an object from another game object in Unity. Uh, to explain this situation, you're, you may have uh, you may want your character uh, to throw a projectile when the user clicks the mouse button. Um, an archer shoots an arrow or a military character throws a grenade. Um, a mage character casts a spell. Call it any situation and this might help you uh, to achieve that effect. And uh, being the unit of beginners video, I'm trying to keep uh, the code and also the logic as simple as possible as usual. Uh, by the way, if you see the scene that I have, and I have a very simple uh, setup in front of me, I have a main camera and I have a ninja character which I have downloaded from craftpix.net. I'll leave the um, direct link to download the sprite sheet uh, right in the description down below. And I have a ground character, uh, uh, sorry, a yeah, ground, that's it. Uh, nothing fancy. And one thing you may have to notice is I have two sets of animations right here. And these are the sprite sheets which I have used. I just want to quickly tell you what I have actually done. Uh, this set of sprites that stands for idle, I have converted it into an animation called idle and the throw animation, this set of uh, sprite became this throw animation. And apart from these, I have uh, one more sprite which I'm, which I'm going to use pretty soon now uh, and more like a knife. Well, quickly, let me show you the animation that is in place. Um, if I select, if I click the, sorry, uh, play button, um, as you can see, the character is in the idle state and that's why you are looking at the animation idle is playing at the moment. And if you look at the animator, um, this is what, what is happening now. When the game is starting, it's going to the idle state. Okay. As you can see, it's playing at the moment. And I have a very small script. Uh, when I click the mouse button, as you can see, the animation state jumps to the throw animation and comes back to the idle. If you are wondering how to do that, I've already done a tutorial on that. Uh, so please watch that to understand how to import sprites into Unity and how to convert uh, the sprite animation into different animation states using the animator window. I'll leave the uh, direct link to my video in the description as well. Now, this video is going to concentrate on when I click this mouse button, how to throw a projectile uh, starting from a position of the character. That's our goal for today. So let's see how to do that. Let me start playing this. Now, let me just open up the script that is attached uh, to the character. Uh, this uh, script, as you can see, is there is nothing fancy in it. It actually have uh, an animator that triggers um, the idle state. I mean, uh, that triggers the other state from idle when you click the mouse button. Uh, this is the script which I've been using. In the start function, I'm making the animator ready, which is attached to the character. And in update, if uh, an user press the mouse button down, which is zero stands for left click. Uh, the trigger of the animator will be uh, changed from idle to throw. And obviously uh, with the help of animator that will go back to idle. So that's the setup we have now. Now we need to concentrate on how to throw the knife that we have in the sprite sheet right here. So what I'm gonna do is let's drag this and drop in over here. Um, Kunai, maybe it's a Ninja Kunai, I don't have to use that name anymore. So I'm gonna just change into a more simple concept called knife. Um, when this object is being thrown, uh, you may have to deal uh, with the collision detection uh, or, to, or the collision detection of this particular object when it uh, touches the enemy or any other further calculations you may need. So it's always a better uh, principle to add a box collider as well uh, so that whenever this character goes it's surrounded by a collider for further calculations. Now uh, when I press the play button nothing fancy happens with the same setup as I showed before. 
Now what I want uh, this knife to do is when I press the uh, play button, this knife needs to move on the right hand side direction. Okay, uh, that's what I want for now. So how to do that is let's go ahead and create a script for our throwable object. Let's say keep it simple knife script. Let's open up. Hmm. Okay, here we go. So in this script, what we're going to do is I want it to travel on the right hand side. So I'm going to say transform dot translate. Uh, on the right side, we're going to be vector dot right, vector three dot right side into what is the speed you want uh, times time dot delta time. So the speed is what you may have to declare right in here. Public. Why public is because we can see it from inside the, within the editor. Uh, public integer is fine. Speed equals five or maybe three. No, let's call it five. Okay, so now let's go back to our Unity. Wait for a while until it finishes compilation. Okay, now it is ready. As you can see, uh, the speed is five. So let me just go ahead and press the play button. There we go. Okay, and it's pretty slow for me at the moment. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just change the speed to nine. Let me check. Press the play button. Cool. Okay, this is more than enough now. Now what happens is, whenever we press the play button, the knife starts moving on the right direction. So the basic movement for the throwable object is done. The next thing we need to do is, we need to convert this into a prefab so we can able to instantiate it as many times that we need. So how to create a prefab is pretty simple. In order to keep the folder organized, I'm going to just create a folder called prefabs, bring the knife over here. Once I'm done, I'm going to delete the existing object so I have only the prefab available for me. So now what I'm going to do is I go to the ninja object, ninja script. So we already have a script when somebody press the mouse button do this which is we are just changing the animation from idle to the throw animation why can't we add instantiate here as well so the code is instantiate we need a game object right on the top so i'm going to say public game object the game object is nothing but the object we want to throw in this case it's going to be a knife so game object knife so in here, instantiate, the syntax would be, what is a game object we want to throw? We want to throw knife. And from where we want to throw? We want to throw from the position of the character. So this script is attached to the ninja. So we're going to say this dot transform dot position, which means whatever the position of the ninja sprite, that sprite, from that, it's actually going to start. And do we need any rotations? We don't need any rotations, so no. So we're going to say quaternion.identity. Quaternion.identity stands for no rotations whatsoever. And end the script. Go back to Unity. Wait until it compile. Yep, that's done. So let's go ahead for the Ninja um, components. And as you can see, now this code is waiting for the game object. Now, which object we are going to throw, we are actually al already have the prefab right here. So I'm going to drag and drop the prefab for the game object and I press the play button. Okay, so when I click, ooh, there we go. So whenever I click, the object keeps going. But we do have a major problem. So what the problem is, I'll show you now quickly. When I press play button, the game is starting. You know, 
this is the total set of objects we have in our scene so but when I press play button it's create a clone but you know what all these clone are keep going forever ever ever okay so there is no end for this game so what happens is your random access memory of your phone if it is playable in the phone or your Xbox or whatever platform that you are preparing your game for might eventually crash because none of your created clones are being destroyed on time so what we can do is there are several ways of stopping this from happening but the best way is when we created this knife okay we should say after translating it destroy it after a while so how to create that command is go for destroy this dot game object which means destroy this game object comma how long after maybe two seconds after okay so here we go wait it until it compiles yep it's done play button okay done can you see I keep pressing it just watch here after two seconds whatever I do everything is being deleted automatically so now what we are doing is this is an optimization technique that whatever you, that you create in the runtime is being destroyed in the runtime because we know for a fact the projectile that we shoot from our character will not be used after the screen space okay so it's always wise to delete them once you create it as an optimization technique now this is exactly um, what we wanted to do at the starting of this exercise but uh, if this is the effect that you want it's okay for example any number of times that you press the character keeps throwing the throwable items if this is what you want it's okay uh, maybe this technique is helpful uh, if you're shooting uh, continuous bullets from a railgun or a laser gun for a galaxy um, kind of games but for this if you want to limit like one projectile at a time and you cannot shoot until the other projectile sorry the first projectile is destroyed then we need to find a way of doing it so how to do that is what we are actually going to see next we need to find the condition well, uh, what condition we are actually going to uh, send the projectiles for example when I press the play button uh, when I actually click the mouse button, I just let me pause the game for a while. As you can see, there is one projectile that has been created with the name knife clone. So what the condition we are going to check now is if one clone exists in the scene, no matter what, how many times the user clicks the mouse button, there should not be another clone created. That's the simple logic and the condition. So how to check whether this object exists here in the scene or not? That's the condition we are going to check. Let me pass the game. Um, go ahead to the code. So in here we say that is one condition already exists, which is if input dot get mouse button down. Why can't we actually add one more condition if the uh, mouse button is down and there is no clone exist, then create a clone. If there is one clone already exists, then do not create it. That's the condition we are going to do. So what we're going to do is we will go ahead and create a variable in here. Uh, I'm going to name it my knife clone or let's say this uh, knife clone is equals. Uh, we're going to actually check game object dot find game object with the tag knife. That's exactly what we are going to do. But before you go ahead, just go back to unity because we need to create a tag with the name knife and attach it to our um, knife object so select the prefab you need to edit the prefab so open the free prefab in here the tags there is obviously it's not a default one so I need to create add tag go for knife make sure the spelling is exactly it's case sensitive so exactly the same and I go back to the knife, make sure I assign it to the knife tag, close the prefab. Now it's set. So in here we say if input dot get mouse button is equal 
G, I mean left click and knife clone is equal to null. Okay, so what happens is let me just go ahead and select, I mean, see whether it works or not. Then I'll come back to you and explain the whole um, logic behind it. Press the play button. As you can see, okay, no matter how many times I click, unless and until this object exists, there will not be another projectile will be created. And that's exactly what we want. So. If one projectile exists, then the character cannot shoot another one. That's exactly the effect we are looking for. Let's go back and see the logic. Now, variable will basically, if you have not come across this one, this variable is a general uh, variable that you can declare under inside any method. But please be very careful because this variable is useful when you assign a variable quickly which means you cannot say variable knife clone then you come back into the different method and reuse it it's not it will not work that way okay since we are actually declaring it straight away I'm using this variable okay so I said where the variable name is knife clone and I'm assigning to a game object and I'm finding a game object with a tag knife we already set the tag for our knife object so the condition now became input that gives uh, get mouse button and if the knife clone is equal to null well if you think what will be the output for this code this output will be true okay so if there is an object with the knife tag enabled then the result that will be stored inside this variable will be not null Okay, which means that something exists. So, if you get input mouth button and when we check if the knife clone is equal to null, which means if no object with the tag name knife exists, then and only then change the animator trigger to throw and instantiate another knife clone. Hope you guys got the logic. It's very simple if you see the code. Okay, so that's how it works. And when you go back and play the game, as I showed you before, when you click, the first projectile goes up and unless it is destroyed, you cannot actually create another projectile no matter how many times you click. So this is the one of the simplest, simplest way that you can create a projectile from the characters. There are several other advanced ways you can able to even create a projectile with one line of code, but you need to actually uh, go through arrays and uh, routines, co-routines, and which, you, which we will be looking at in the future classes. For now, I try to keep uh, this as simple as possible and hope I have actually achieved that. If you like this content, if you have come until uh, this uh, area of the video, I think you might already like the video. So please do uh, subscribe if you like the content of my channel and uh, I will be coming up with an, a lot of other new concepts in Unity. And thank you so much for watching this video and I wish you all the best in whatever you do with Unity and other things. Uh, take care guys. I'll see you pretty soon with me another video. Ta-da. Bye-bye.